editor and we'll go to the settings.py file and in this file we have a lot of settings all right the first portion here um, gives you a, a hint where to look in the Django project documents on how to uh, configure this file and what a lot of this means all right uh, the first thing we come to is import OS and Django uses import OS which is a Python um, package it, um, what it does is allows us to access the path inside our computer. All right. So if you come down here and you see base dir, this is a variable, and it's assigned to OS path dir name, OS path dir name, OS path absolute path file, and this is the actual file of where our um, or directory where our project lives. So to see what that actually is, we can do something like this. We can do print base dir. All right. Oops, base dir, all caps. We'll save our file, command s if you're on Sublime or most text editors will allow you to do that. And we go in here and I'm gonna go ahead and kill my server, kill the server real quick, control C. And then I'm gonna push up and rerun it. If you push the up, it's gonna run your last command, hit rerun it, and it's gonna print out a path here. Users, Tom, desktop blog CMS that is the path the main path to my Django project right there all right so if you ever need to know where that is just go ahead and run print uh, base dir and it will give you this path pretty sweet so I'm gonna go ahead and comment that out so you guys can see it later on I will put all this on github shortly anyhow <clears throat> next thing is uh, quick start development settings this is uh, how to deploy your project. It's a checklist that Django uh, provides you. Go ahead and check that out when you're ready to deploy. Uh, I'll work, walk you through deployment anyway onto uh, Heroku. Uh, security warnings. Uh, right here is a secret key. Keep this secret. I'm going to end up changing mine before I go and deploy mine. So that's why I can show it to you. Uh, but uh, secret key keeps your uh, Django project safe, so you want to keep this a secret, hence secret key. Next thing we see is debug true. All right, now debug true is one of my favorite features with Django. Is the debug on Django projects is very informative. It will kick back any error and give you the best explanation of why you're getting that error and where to find that error. So we'll see this in our project. I'm bound to screw up somewhere, and you're bound to screw up somewhere, and you'll see this, and you'll be like, oh, what? Um, one thing you don't want to do is uh, deploy your website with uh, debug true on because <laughs> it gives away a lot of information about your project, and then people could hack it. So uh, in deployment, we'll just put a little note here, in deployment, make false just like that all right or actually make debug equal to, equal to false just like that all right so when we go to deploy it it's going to be debug equals false now allowed host um, when debug is made false then we need a loud loud host and this would be your domain name domain name for example so we'll say something like HTTP Actually, we'll just do this. Currently, that's our domain name, and that's how you put it in. This actually has to be a string, so we'll just do that. All right, so just like that. Go ahead and delete that out because we don't need that right now. Um, down here, we go to installed apps. We'll use this a lot because every time we create a new app for our project, uh, we'll have to add it in here. But currently, it has some default apps for us, like admin, which we haven't taken a look at, but admin's the uh, pretty cool framework for the back end that allows us to make changes in the back end <clears throat> and that's what this app is. Auth is the authentication to sign into our project uh, via the back end or if you create your own sign in type thing say you made a social network and the user has to sign in we can use the auth uh, framework. Content types that's uh, different types of content types it's another framework sessions um, is another one for handling uh, sessions, messages, yeah, handles messages like our messages that we can kick back to a user, and then static files 
this framework handles all our static files like CSS, uh, JavaScript, <coughs> and so on. <clears throat> uh, middleware is little software packages that handle um, communication between the server and our framework. Uh, they happen very quickly. Uh, we don't really mess with these too much. You can create your own little ones if you need them to do that, but these files are literally very small and um, matter of milliseconds how quick they communicate with the server in our project. Uh, root URL conf, uh, we took a look at that. Uh, the URLs, that's the main URL file for our project. So CMS URLs, it's this one right here. All right. Um, templates. Now, the Django comes with a, uh, a template. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, processor. And it allows us to use Python code within HTML code in our templates. And it gives us a lot of fun functionality, which is really cool. So um, right now, we're just going to keep this as is. But in future projects, we might try a different one. But for now, we'll keep it this way. Uh, you can see debugs in here, requests is in here, auth, authenticate, and messages are the context processors that are options in here, app theirs is true, all that kind of stuff. Uh, down here we see our WSGI application again. This is the location of our, w, our, our WSGI, which helps communicate between the server and our Django project, and it's located right here. Um, our database, we already talked about that. We're going to use SQLite 3. If you want to use another database, you would have to change the information here. And um, when you're using another database, it's likely they're going to ask you for username, password, and all that other stuff, and you would add it here. Um, pass. I was having a coughing attack there. Anyway, um, what was I going to say? Uh, authentic password validators. These are uh, small little software packages that come with Django to allow us to authenticate um, passwords and whatnot. We'll take a look at that in the future. Uh, language code, English, US. I'm, I'm from the US and I speak English, so I'm gonna keep that. Time zones, UTC, we can change that if you would like to. Uh, if you go to um, I18N um, in Django, it'll explain to you how to change all this around the time zones and whatnot. And then the final one is static URL. This is where our static files would be located. So um, we'd actually put the file in here in the top CMS and the stack would be down here. We'll do that in the future, but that's how it locates the static files. That is the settings.py file. You guys probably wouldn't understand it very well right now because I kind of just whizzed through it. I didn't really go in depth to it, but when we make a change to it, I'll be sure to explain to you why we're making a change and how we're making a change. And, what's the purpose and whatnot. Um, but if you do have questions, let me know. But I suggest you just hold on until we start moving through the project because we will be making changes to the settings.py file. There's going to be some settings that we add. There'll be some settings that we remove. So there will be changes. Uh, and I'll make those as I see fit as we move through the project because I'm currently not really 100% sure where we're going with this project. I just know it's going to be a CMS that has blog functions and post blog posts and pages and whatnot. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if not, we're going to create our first app in the next tutorial and start building our blog. So I'll see you then.